Hey home bakers, it's Jack here at bakewithjack.co.uk bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week, if you don't do this already, it's going to be a bit of a game changer for you. Hey you guys, welcome back. Uh, now, one of my most, in fact, the most successful video I've ever put out on this channel is one entitled, How to Stop My Loaf from spreading out flat. That's the most popular one. I don't know why, it's not a particularly good one, but it's probably the most helpful, hands-on one that you'll see, and a problem that is experienced quite a lot. So consider this video a little bit of a part two to continue on from that one. If you're still having issues with loaves spreading out, whether it is that cob loaf or a bloomer or whatever it is that's spreading out for you, not rising up nice and tall and proud, here's something that you can do. Okay, before we begin, a couple of things to note. This dough that I have made is about 65% hydration and it's just strong white bread flour. This works with all different flours and all different doughs. However, once you get into sourdough territory and super wet doughs, the shaping technique is slightly different, although the principle is exactly the same. So the key is, if you want to build more tension in your dough and more structure in your dough to help it keep that nice tall shape as it rises up really nicely, you've got to shape it up, not once, but twice. And let me go and get the dough and tell you and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. As always, I've got a nice little tidy box of flour to help me out along the way. And the Bake With Jack dough scraper, super helpful piece of plastic available from the Bake With Jack shop. And here's my dough, it's been resting up for about an hour. It's all proved up and ready for the shaping. And this is what I'm gonna do first. First things first, dust the table, just a little touch, as usual. Now I'm gonna take it out of the bowl. It's gonna come out of the bowl, upside down nicely for me, as normal, every single time, upside down, so it's nice and sticky on the top, but it doesn't stick to the table underneath. Now I'm gonna make this, this is a one kilo of flour, which will make me two nice loaves. So I'm gonna push it out very slightly, just to help me out, and then I'm gonna cut it into two to make two loaves. And whatever you're cutting into, two or four, at this point, you just cut it into what you need to cut. Right, here goes. Straight side of the scraper like this, flat edge down onto the table like this, cut down and peel away. All the way down. I'm not gonna weigh these to see if they're the same, but you can if you want to, that's fine. First thing I'm gonna do is the pre-shape. So the first shape, I'm just gonna fold it up like this and fold it into that nice ball, exactly like I did in that last video. Like this, right? Nice, nice ball, like that. Wonderful. Tighten it up a little touch on the surface of the table. And that is the shape of your cob, okay? That's your cob loaf shaped up, but that's gonna spread. Let's say it's gonna spread a little bit. If we have that problem, here's what we do next. We just leave it alone for a bit. That's all we do next, we just leave it alone. So that's the shape of your cob loaf done. I'm gonna do exactly the same with this one. Make it into a nice ball, folding it in on itself like that. Nice, tight ball, ready to prove up into a nice cob loaf. Like that. Done. Two nice bouncy balls, ready to go, but just to make sure that they do rise up nice and proud, now I'm just gonna leave them a bit. I'm gonna rest them here for 15 minutes or maybe even 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna shake them up again. So pop your cloth back on the top and go and sit down, go and relax. Okay, 30 minutes has passed, and if we take it off, you can see it's definitely grown and it's spread a little bit. This one's not too bad because of the low hydration, but the higher the hydration, the more likely it is gonna spread out. And all you gotta do is flip it back upside down, make sure it doesn't stick. If it does, give it a little dust in the flour, give it a little press, and just shape it up a second time. Rebuilding that tension, rebuilding that structure, and it will come up even taller than it would have done before. You'll get a little squeaking, little pop as you're popping the bubbles there, but that's absolutely fine. In fact, it's a good sign. It means that you worked it really well in the first place. 
And there you go. Now it's got its bounce back, it's got its firmness back and its structure. And you can keep doing this again and again and again. It's only going to make it better. Better structure leads to better shape and better chance of it bursting open on the top when you make those cuts later on. And there you have it, that technique works whether you're making a cob loaf like that or whether you're making a bloomer or whether you're making baguettes or rolls. Divide up your dough, shape them all into balls first and then shape them then into the next thing. That's double the shaping. You're always building structure and tension along the way, making an even better structure for the final shape. And that's it. One more thing I want to tell you about, which is really, really exciting, is that Bake With Jack merchandise, like the rather wonderful Bake With Jack dough scraper and that cloth that you saw earlier, are now available for worldwide delivery. So if you want to get your hands on one, click the link in the description underneath to take you to the Bake With Jack shop, and I can post it to you wherever you are in the world. How cool is that? As always, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you next week for another bit of bread making wisdom served straight out of my nut. See you soon. Bye bye.